Hey everybody, I'm out in the woods today. I brought my Jeep, my new one. I got my uh, potato sack, mesh bag. We're going to go out and do a little mushroom hunting. See if we have any success. I'll look for asparagus also. Hope you enjoy. I'll show you if I find anything. If not, be pretty boring and probably hit delete. Alright, take care. Show you some of the country. A nice big old swamp. Got an old railroad bed over there. They made it into a walk path. But uh, that drops off. It's a pretty good area down in there. All right. I'll turn you back on if something happens. Take care. Hey, everybody. I was out here today in the woods doing a little morale hunting. I only checked uh, one good spot pretty thoroughly. I didn't have any success. It might be a hair early. I noticed the dirt's still real cold. So I uh, popped over across the road to one of my asparagus spots. There's a little bit up. I already picked some. I got excited. Enough for dinner. Let me see if I can find it. There we go. Got a little bit up. It's just now starting to come. So I'll get enough for dinner. Go on about my way. There's another patch over there I haven't checked yet. Some big stuff. So, spring has sprung, it's starting to grow. Keep your eye peeled. Later. Hey y'all, uh, I'm just out in the woods today looking for uh, mushrooms. I didn't find any, I found some asparagus. I already showed you a minute ago, but it depends how I put the thing together. Um, I thought I'd show you what to look for. This is an old, kind of an obvious farmstead. At one time, I'm sure there was a barn and a house here. It's on public land. And uh, when asparagus is full grown, it will end up in a bush like this. Of course, this is knocked down from the winter. But you can see it's a real light, kind of frilly plant it actually gets pretty tall and it will be uh, very bright to fluorescent green in the summer and in the fall it turns a golden color so a lot of times you can drive down the back roads and find it in the fall and then remember in the spring so as soon as we get a little rain that warms up and then down here every year it grows in the same place right here is a sprout this one here looks like it got frost nipped because it's kind of curled over. Here's another one. That's what you're looking for. These, these uh, sprouts will probably get 8-10 inches tall before they start branching out. That's when you want to pick them. You can pick them earlier too, but you know to get... Oh, here's one I can pick. Right down in here along the grass, see right here? There's a, a good edible asparagus sprout. You move that grass there we go right there so you just grab it you can pop it with a knife or just snap them off there there's two bites but you put them all in the bag they add up I got enough for dinner I think I got some uh, venison tenderloin in the freezer so I might have me a little uh, wild game dinner tonight some smashed potatoes Here's another sprout I can pick. The leaf is in the way. There's another sprout. This is good stuff. If you like asparagus from the store, you're going to go nuts over this stuff. The flavor is just crazy. But there's a, a patch here. There's another patch right here somewhere. I can't find it right now. Patch here. And then down along this tree line. That's where I just talked to you at, right over by those bushes. There's another big patch. So you just got to kind of keep your eyeball out, and if nobody beats you to it, it's yours for the taking. Have a good afternoon. See ya. All right, I was just on my way back to the truck following the game trail. I'm heading that away through the brush. I figured I'd just walk along the road. Along the game trail, I found this dead elm. So I took a little look underneath, and I found a couple morels. They're kind of small, 
see if I can even get them in the viewfinder. Let me put my hand out so I can follow my fingers. Right here at the tip of my middle finger. Let me get you down in there. Little tiny one. That one's a little worse for wear, so I'll leave it. Spread the seed. I'm still looking. I never pick one until I look around and find another one. And then right over here we got one. It's rather small also, but it's. I still think it's kind of early. Right there. About the size of my finger. But that adds some flavor to my venison. Oh, there's another one. Another small one, of course. I gotta be careful so I don't stomp on any. Right there. See that sponge look? Uh-oh. See that sponge look? There's no mistake in it. The top is totally connected to the stem. If it's like a bell and not connected, then it's a false morel. And they are toxic. I don't know how toxic, but they are. Let me see. There's another one right there. Awesome. Uh, I see one laying down. This is tough. Right there. See it laying behind the leaf? And I see another one straight out. Boy, this is hard. Right there. That one's a little bigger. That's about twice the size of my thumb. So that'll make my venison taste a little better tonight. Fresh morels, fresh asparagus. Fresh venison. Can't go wrong with that. All I need is my mashed potatoes. Alright, I'm going to get these harvested. I'll try to see if I can find some more. If I find any big ones, I'll turn you back on. Cool. Uh, I'm still under that same tree. Uh, there's more morels under here than I thought. The more I look around, the more I find. Um, one of the ways it helps me is you... Let me uh, back you out. Oh, yeah. You can't just uh, step into a place and just look at the leaf litter. You have to really slow down. And what's worked for me is... And only because it's the first morel I ever found I used it I get a dead elm branch and there's no reasoning behind that but what happens is you get the elm branch until you train yourself and you take this stick and instead of looking at the big blur you take the stick and it helps focus your eye so you kind of follow the stick and it helps you focus you'll see you know it you start seeing individual leaves and then once you start to focus, you follow the stick. Next thing you know, bingo. Found another one. A little bigger than the other ones. A couple times larger than my thumb. But you really have to slow down and focus. I just pinch them off. And usually before I pick this one, I scan real good and trying to find another one. And I have right there another little one. And I just found another one, a little tiny one. Right there. These are extra smalls. I still think it's kind of early. And uh, people say they grow daily, you know, like a regular plant does, but I don't know. I've seen them grow small and just stay small. Um, I've seen some more over here to the right. Over here on the sunny side of the tree. I'm going to go over there and uh, see if I can find a few more. See this uh, underbrush and this patchy kind of ground with the moss and the shallow leaf litter. Uh, little patches of dirt here and there. That's where I've had my best success. It also seems like there's always some kind of terrain change, which is kind of weird, I know, but 
if you kind of observe, you know, you can see this little ditch right here. And then this kind of humps up. I don't know. It just seems that this is the kind of area I have my best luck. I've uh, found a lot of morels out in fields and stuff around dead elms or whatever. I have found them in uh, poplar thickets. But it seems like there's always these open patches. Um, I've looked for them around a lot around oak trees. And it seems like I have never found one around an oak tree uh, where the uh, leaf litter is real thick and packed down after the winter. So I don't know if they need this little bit of open ground to get the warmth or whatever. But I'm no expert. It's just I've had my best success with the moss in the thin leaf litter. All right, I'd call that a success. I didn't find any big ones, but I found a good handful of little ones. That's enough for a flavor enhancer. Um, none of them are in great shape, but I'll soak them in some salt water. Now see how the head of the mushrooms is actually part of the stem? On a false morale, you'll see the stem and then the rest of it is like a toadstool where it's just kind of balancing on the top. That's how you know the difference. They look a little bit different too, but they're close to the same uh, kind of sponge pattern. So I'm going to take these home, soak them in a bowl of salt water, fry them up with my venison and asparagus, and uh, have a great dinner. Good luck. All right, I'm going to call that a success. Got a pretty good pile of asparagus, handful of mushrooms. I'll uh, take this all in, wash it up. I'll soak the mushrooms in salt water just to make sure there's no buggies inside. And then I'll uh, cut them in half with the scissors and fry them up. The asparagus I'll steam. Put a little lemon, butter, salt, pepper. We're good to go. There you go, folks. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Asparagus, a little overcooked. Uh, morels. Almost fried crunchy. These things are awesome. Too hot. And venison tenderloin medallions. Bon appetit.